of bipartisan lawmakers are in fact urging President Biden to take a more hardline stance on Iran following the attack on Israel by Hamas. They wrote a letter saying in part, this war would not have been possible without Iranian weapons, funding and support. One of them joins me now, Democratic Congressman Jared Moskowitz of Florida. I'm sure you just heard Matt Bradley's reporting. Obviously, um, Hezbollah and Hamas, both benefactors of Iran, a patron uh, of those terrorist organizations. What compelled you to write this letter, though, with a Republican Congressman Claudia Tenney? What specific actions do you want to see the president take? Well, thank you, Chris. I really appreciate the opportunity to talk about this. Look, President Biden is doing a fantastic job handling an un really terrible, unfortunate uh, situation. But I th we believe that there is more that can be done with dealing with the Iranian regime. We've known for some time that they are the world's largest sponsor of terror, especially in this region. In this region, and their hands are all over what Hamas has done between the years of financing and the movement of weapons. Let alone, obviously, Hezbollah in Lebanon on the border of Israel. And so, what we're asking for specifically is if the administration is engaged in any negotiations to revive any of the pieces of the JCPOA, we think that should be dead. Rigor mortis should set into that negotiations. There should be nothing going on with Iran. Additionally, we think the sanctions uh, on Iran's oil needs to be enforced and expanded to make sure there's no loopholes so that they can't continue to make money by sending oil to China and then sending those revenues over to Hamas uh, and Hezbollah. And then also the Iran Revolutionary Guard should be deemed a terrorist organization. That's all that they do, quite frankly. There's no reason why that hasn't been named. This has come up previously before, and we think now is the time to get these things accomplished. Meantime, of course, we're watching where you are, Capitol Hill, waiting to find out what happens next after Jim Jordan did not get enough support in the first round of voting for Speaker. Just moments ago, uh, former House Speaker Kevin McCarthy spoke to reporters. Let me play for you, Congressman, what he had to say. Jordan has just as many votes as I had on the first round. I think the, the difference here, too, is we have rules so we can sit down, talk to the other members, and be able to move forward. I'll talk to Jim, and I'll help in every way I can. Have you talked to those members? Have you been whipping the votes since then already, or no? Do you think he'll get there? Yes. So he said he thinks he'll get there. Do you think today will end with a speaker, Jim Jordan? And if that's the case, what would that mean for Democrats? Well, look, first, Jim Jordan tried to steal an election, which he failed at, and now he tried to win the speaker's election, which he failed at. So perhaps this, you know, trying to, this election thing's not really up for Jim Jordan. Uh, you know, look, we don't know where this is going to go. Uh, you know, my colleagues across the aisle are in complete disarray and in chaos, and quite frankly, that's not good for the American people. It's not good for the House of Representatives. We need a functioning Republican Party to make this place work. There's only two parties, Democrats and Republicans. Uh, look, Democrats are committed to figure out a way with Republicans to ha get this House reopened, to do the people's business, to pass whatever aid package Israel needs, to pass a package for, for Ukraine, and to keep the government open. But it's unclear what they're going to do. They may come back after, you know, right-wing media and Twitter try to squeeze some of these folks that voted against Jim Jordan and try to whittle that number down. But, you know, 20 votes against Jim Jordan, I think that's going to be very hard to overcome. Uh, and so we'll have to see where it all goes, Chris. We'll take a listen to what Republican Congressman Dan Meeser said just moments ago about another possible venue. Take a listen to that. I'm actually one that's not opposed to expanding the authority of the pro tem. Yeah. Now, some in there are a hard no on that. You know, as a business person for most of my, my adult life, I don't see what the problem is by doing that, letting us get back to work while a, uh, while a, a campaign would just be uh, for, for speaker takes place over the next 10 days. Given the critical need for a speaker right now, aid to Israel for starters, a month away from having to fund the government, would Democrats potentially support a move like that? Yeah, look, at this juncture, Chris, I would. Uh, I would support uh, giving uh, Pro Tem McHenry some limited powers to get some of these critical things done for maybe a 30-day period. I think that would, you know, help, help aid to Israel, Ukraine, keep the government open, and help the American people. Democrats, I think, are willing to do that. I'm willing to do that to give those powers to Pro Tem McHenry. And quite frankly, to help my colleagues across the aisle have a little bit more time to get this chaos that, that is consuming them under control. And so I would support such a measure. Congressman Jared Moskowitz, thank you so much. I 